Entertaining. Cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio. You're listening to Female Filmmakers Fuse with Alexa Polar and Robin Pabello only on L.A. Talk Radio. Thank you and welcome to Female Filmmakers Fuse. I'm your host, Alexa Polar. Hey, this is Robin Pabello. Uh, real quick, I want to wish my dad a happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dad out, out there, um, all the fathers out there. I My dad's most likely listening, maybe not. I don't know. My mom <laughs> listens to it all the time, so she's probably calling him right now and saying, like, your daughter's wishing you. So I'll postpone and I'll say hello and happy Father's Day to my dad and to my baby brother, who is also named Brett. Okay, uh, th- 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 I don't think that's his uh, actual legal name, but yes, yeah, she calls him Brat. Um, he responds to it in a crowd. He responds. I'll say, hey, Sean, Sean, Brat. And he's like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> there you go. So happy Father's Day to all the wonderful dads out there, because I know there are plenty. Um, and if you wish to you know, listen to the show, you can always catch us on iTunes, Google Play, all those fun podcasting streaming services. We also place this on our YouTube page, uh, which is under Female Filmmakers Fuse. Try saying that a lot. Um, (laughs) And and, uh, so you can always catch us there. It's easier to share. And then, you know, thankfully, because LA Talk Radio, there's, you know, they're really great here. They have a lot of great shows. You can catch us live outside of this podcast that you're listening to you can also watch us live on their facebook page and you can share that as well um, which i'll be doing and then um yeah so let's get started uh our very special guest today is lisa brenner yes oh and i almost forgot if you want to call in it's 818-602-4929 that's 818-602-4929 lisa you're here to promote your latest project which is Say my name, and when I hear that, see that, I always think of Destiny's Child. <laughs> so oh my in my God. head, I'm like yeah. dancing to it. Okay, <laughs> but uh, it's a it's a very it's a really good film. It's a comedy. It's mm-hmm. a it, I almost want to say a sort of dark comedy, but only because of the situation that transpires within yes. the film. Mm-hmm. I'll have you say a little bit more about it, but I love it because it's very creative. It's almost a, a comedy film noir, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what I like about it because I'm into that kind of uh, genre. And um, you're the lead in it, yes. uh, and I love the fact that um, what this film does to women, mm-hmm. what it represents mm-hmm. women, what your character represents, yes. um, and the freedom that it represents mm-hmm. in that. And so there's so much in detail that I want to go into with this mm-hmm. project. So. Let's just start with that, Lisa. Uh, thank you, by the way, for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, and, and happy Father's Day to my husband, Dean. There Aww. you go. Happy Father's Day, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> so, why don't you let's get started with this? Uh, say my name. How did mm-hmm. you come across this project? Was it brought to you, or yes? I, well, I decided with my friend Jay Stern. Uh, we went to Columbia together. I went to Barnard. He went to Columbia, and I was in the first play he ever directed. He's a big uh, theater director in New York. And we just stayed friends, and he's one of the best directors and the most creative people I know, and we just love each other. And we decided we wanted to do something together, and I was ready to produce. Actually, I was, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it was this, I don't think it was this show, but I was actually in this office um, with a play I produced. I used to uh, produce a lot of theater with Mm -hmm. my little theater company. Anyway, I finally... um, felt like I needed to take my career into my own hands. Mm-hmm. Um, when I turned 40, mm-hmm. um, all of a sudden, as an actor in Hollywood, all my parts just stopped coming. Mm. And the only thing I could go for was the best friend of the lead or the aunt of the lead right. or the <laughs> mom of the lead. And I was always crying about something or just saying, are you OK, and leave the room. And it was just getting really, really depressing as an actor. And I just, I I wanted to do more. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to have better representation for women on screen. Right. And show that I'm now 45. A 45-year-old can be in a sex scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, crazy. Or a 45-year-old could be in a crazy romance. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, just to show that we have lives right. over 40. We're not just Which, crying about something. I know we're on the radio, but my God, woman, you do not look 45 <laughs> at <laughs> no. all. You're gorgeous. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. 
I think my my children have put years, <laughs> here, but thank you. Um, but yeah, I wanted to look real. I I wanted to show every line in my face mm -hmm. and just um, to show a more real version of a woman on screen. Anyway, to get back to your original <laughs> question, Jay um, found this project by his friend who's a comedian in London. Her name is Deborah Francis White, and she has a podcast called The Guilty Feminist. Mm. She has a big following in the UK. Very nice. Yeah, and um, I read it once. I said, I have to play this part. Right. Mm. And we figured out the financing, and we brought the whole thing together. And by August 1st, two years ago, we were in Wales shooting. Uh, and that was going to be my next question. That you mm -hmm. actually film on location, because I know that's yeah. where the story takes place. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you guys actually filmed that? Well, it wasn't originally written for Wales. Mm -hmm. It was written as a British island. But as we started researching, we, there was no way we could shoot in London. It was a tiny little budget. Mm -hmm. right. um, and just shooting anywhere in England was really hard. Um, but then we found that in Cardiff, Wales, they have huge, not only tax incentives, but they do tons of TV shows like Doctor Who mm -hmm. and Casualty and all right. these big shows. And I chose August to shoot while they were on hiatus. Yep, we got perfect. these great crews. <laughs> oh my god! That goodness. were just so excited to work on a feature. Yeah, and it was just a love fest every day. That's and, amazing. Yeah, and then we ended up adapting the script to sh to fit Wales and hired all local Welsh actors. And oh. It was just so fantastic. That yeah, I was gonna great. say. I mean, that's the beauty of writing. Mm -hmm. Is like if you keep the core of your story mm -hmm. your location just can be wherever you want it to be absolutely that's fantastic yeah it also had to be adapted because originally the lead actor the lead character i played wasn't american mm -hmm. and it was so we wanted it to be an american coming to this island and we just kept saying well why is she there why is she there mm -hmm. And then this other huge story line arose, mm. which I'm not going to give away. No, okay. please don't. <laughs> you have to see it. Yes. But yeah, that wouldn't have happened had I not had I not been American. Okay. So that's great. And so yeah. it, it kind of morphed into the the project into the film, mm -hmm. which kind of gave it a little bit more strength. Yeah, and it, a whole because it, it, it's kind of a screwball comedy mm -hmm. and romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. But then there's this all, whole. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I do it all the time. It's okay. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. not the only one. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Super clumsy. <laughs> There's a whole other side of it um, mm -hmm. that really takes you by surprise. So it's not it's not what you're going to expect in Ooh, the first scene. I love it. Pretty so we, uh, so uh, for, since we're on the topic of it, so mm -hmm. where can our listeners find this to watch? You can find it at www.saymynamemovie.com. And on the Electric Entertainment uh, page, too. Awesome. Lovely. Because yeah. it, you can purchase it on yes. iTunes and Amazon as well, correct? Mm -hmm. And rent yeah. it there as well? Yes. But there's also some selected theaters that are showing it. Yes. Right now in L.A., we're at the Arena Cine Lounge in Hollywood oh. and at the Lemley. It's so great. Great The theater. Lemley Santa Monica, the Monica Film Center. Nice. And how long is it going to be there for? <laughs> well, <laughs> depend. Hopefully, if all your viewers <laughs> go today, we'll probably be there next weekend too. Okay. We'll be there all week. Oh, okay. wonderful! But we're not guaranteed an, uh, another weekend unless you know until they see Enough how we did this and, weekend. Of course. Okay. But I think we did well so far, so we're hoping for at least another weekend. That's good. Good. We'll yeah. push for really that. Good. And yeah, you said you had you. mentioned prior to us being on the air that you did some Q and A's. How were? How was that? Yes. Oh, so fun. So fun. Um. Well, one thing I had to tell the audience at the at the Santa Monica Lemley is when I was a struggling actress. Mm -hmm. Well, I everyone's a struggling. Like I am a struggling actress. <laughs> I'm just struggling in life. I'm a struggling mother. I'm struggling everything. <laughs> but aren't we all on some level? Yeah. Um, but when I first moved here about 20 years ago, the Lemley theaters to me were like, if you're starring in a movie mm -hmm. being played at a Lemley theater you've reached nirvana mm -hmm. nice. and that was always my goal and i didn't realize it until friday night i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i'm starring in a movie at a lemley theater um so it just it meant so much to me to just be there and to to share That's my great. art with yeah, the world yeah I, I mean that feeling of elation of just seeing yeah you know, it, it's kind of funny because, like, as an actor, I, I don't, I can't relate. But like, mm -hmm. when you see your name on the screen, for for you, obviously, it's like you see yourself on the screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, what? 
Because what goes through your mind and your soul and your body? Yeah, well, it's different because I produced it too. So I was so involved in the shots and I was so involved in the edit and I was so involved in all of that that mm -hmm. I, I, like to me when I watch the movie, it's not me at all that I'm watching. I'm mm -hmm. watching this other actress that I'm trying to like improve her performance <laughs> <laughs> and wish she did a different take. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool thing and really nerve wracking to watch as the producer and just kind of hope everyone likes it. But um, in the screenings I attended, they laughed in all the right places. That's they perfect. cried in all the right places. Oh, so okay. for me, that's success. No. Um, this is an independent project mm -hmm. and you've been uh, attached to several different projects that have several different budgets to it. Oh yeah. But this is obviously a little bit different because mm -hmm. as you mentioned, you were a part of it in a whole different level. Mm -hmm. So you're m more involved, oh, correct? Yeah. And so there's more blood into it, more sweat, tears, oh, everything, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're going through the whole process, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, my husband, he's a filmmaker and he would always um, talk about his films as his babies. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, they are not your babies. Your <laughs> children are your babies. They are not. <laughs> Granted. And now, Say My Name is my baby <laughs> oh, right. that it got to a point where she <laughs> was in I love that. all of these film festivals around the world, <clears throat> especially in Wales. And um, the director and I were trying to decide which one of us was going to go. And he's, I said, well, I can't go. I was just there for mm -hmm. a different film festival. And he's like, well, I can't go. I'm directing this play. And I, it just came out of my mouth. I'm like, well, someone's got to be with her. <laughs> like, how could she just perform by herself up there on that big screen? But it's, such, it's, it's weird to think, like, right now, as right. we speak, she <laughs> is in Hollywood being played. And it's just... <laughs> And I just kind of hope everyone loves her. <laughs> no, I think they will. I think, yeah. like I said, it, it's such a creative storyline. Mm -hmm. um, and all the pieces have come together perfectly. Because you know how they say, yeah. like, you know, you need s strong story, strong mm -hmm. performance. strong mm -hmm. Like, everything has to combine to make a great project. Yeah. And I think that's what you have here with oh, Say My Name. You. So I... I I do see it succeeding beyond, and, and I hope that it does. Because like I said, I, I did rent it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do encourage others to watch it as mm -hmm. well and watch it multiple times. Don't rent it, buy it. <laughs> that way you can watch it a lot of times yeah. over. <laughs> but um, how was it, you, you know, because you did pinpoint on some things where uh, being a female and after a certain age, it's kind of like, you're written off. And mm -hmm. I think that's what happens a lot in time in every industry, mm -hmm. um, every industry. So like I, I'm 42 and it's kind of like, I, I've been asked like, um, you know, some people think like, oh, she didn't go anywhere or isn't any, you know, maybe there's some resentment or something cause she didn't go far or whatever. They have no idea what each of us, like what you said, we all have our own struggles. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm at a point in my life where I'm really grateful for where I'm at. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like my mom's caretaker and I'm mm -hmm. so grateful for that because mm -hmm. I realize like how much I want to be there. Yeah. But at the same time, that's given me freedom to do what I love to do. So mm -hmm. with this female filmmakers fuse, I'm at home and I'm on it all day and all night. I'm working on it all day and all night. So that's kind of like my baby. Right. Yeah. So I have this whole, um, I have people that are involved now that I'm grateful for that are going to take it to another level. Mm -hmm. And it's because of Say My Name, mm -hmm. that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, because I want to make sure that your project gets the recognition it deserves, that you get the recognition you deserve for this project, no matter what your age is, mm -hmm. more so. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, to me, it's very important because in any line of industry, no matter if it's in their entertainment or in law or you know in the medical world it's always people always talking about like oh this person made it because they were young and that's great i <laughs> i think that's amazing mm -hmm. but like my mom always makes an example of a relative that i had he, she said you know this uncle um kept pushing and pushing and everyone kept making fun of him because they said you're never going to make it and he ended up being an attorney at a very late age in life wow and he's super successful and mm -hmm. it was because he said i don't life happens mm -hmm. just because it happens doesn't mean i gave up on what i want to do mm -hmm. right you know 100%. you just you just got to get rid of the negative 
negative people, negative stuff, mm -hmm. and then you just keep moving forward. Anyone that thinks like you're resentful for anything or because you didn't make it, mm -hmm. get rid of them. They're not worth it in your life. Yeah. And I think that's why it's amazing of what you've done with this project. Thank you. You know, you you said you were getting these parts, the the supporting whatever, and you're not. You're the lead. Mm -hmm. You're the lead in your life, yeah. and you found this project to make sure like, hey we still exist yeah we're leads mm -hmm. you know exactly. that's what it is yeah say my name is that yeah. you know that's why it's so important you know and i love what it's about <laughs> and i love what it represents you know mm -hmm. which is kind of like you you represent that as well thank you yeah i realized you know having i have two girls and i'm telling them constantly you can be whatever mm -hmm. you want to be and i mean they are raised in such a different world than me yeah that they could literally mm -hmm. be anything, anything they want to be yeah and and then i realized there is such a pressure on women to be the perfect mother mm -hmm. oh my gosh and i was feeling it in preschool and <sighs> just getting there's yeah. so much pressure to feed your kids organic and oh my gosh and yeah. do crafts at home and i when all my heart like i want to create movies and i want to <laughs> do my acting and i want to be there for them and i love them so much but that's not all of who I am. Right. And then I realized that, like, I was almost being hypocritical with them, saying, well, you could be whatever you want until you're a mother, and then you have to give it all up. Right. Just oh, to tell yeah. your children they could be whatever they want. And, yeah. and I'm their example. So how can I be their example when I just kind of am fading away and letting that part of me go away? And it's just, it would, it's made me a better mother being Amazing. fulfilled creatively right and i just uh, gosh s so much of what has come out of this for me at film festivals speaking to ev other women saying you know yeah you're right when i became a mother and i tried to get back into work i couldn't mm -hmm. i have a dp friend of mine that just she's really struggling right now because i hate to use the word gave it up but she she stopped to be a mother mm -hmm and cannot get work now because it's like where have you been yeah that You're pause really, yeah, yeah there is this major it. pause mm -hmm. because we do love our children of course 100 percent. yeah and um when you try to get back now suddenly you're too old you're out of the loop I, um, I mean i have i have seen that a little bit but i think mm -hmm. because we do have some trailblazers that are leading the way of being mm -hmm. on set like um rachel morrison oh, so yeah cool. amazing <laughs> polly polly morgan is mm -hmm. uh, she also was like on set until she was ready to give birth and then she know. was and they were all working and so the support of the men that were on set behind mm -hmm. camera and into production in front of camera mm -hmm. so i th i think that as long as they have a good support system and mm -hmm. they know the resources mm -hmm. i mean you know that's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to is just lifting each other up and like saying oh okay Absolutely. this person's looking for this or like oh they need this many hours for health care whatever it happens to be mm -hmm. as long as there's a good support mm -hmm. i think you know i i know it's it's a challenge mm -hmm. to like get right back on because like the, the saying is, is you're only as good as your last job. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that's what she's feeling right now. Cause mm -hmm. she had to pause, which is, I mean, it's a magical pause. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had any children, but like I would pause for them mm -hmm. like when and if I do. So yeah. here's my thing is mm -hmm. that, that that's that saying I, it's a male saying and a lot of it's, it came from a man. A lot of the things that we, we do and and I'm not trying to mail bash, but I'm saying uh -huh. like we, if we're changing things in this in this industry, mm -hmm. we need to change everything completely and and be fully committed to that change. Mm -hmm. So with your your friend that's a DP yeah. that can't get work, I cannot stand that excuse where like I you know after the third no they're not going to call me again. Then they're not worth it. Mm -hmm. Then you have to find like what she was saying the, the support mm -hmm. that they understand like hey I'm taking a leave of absence because this right now. Mm -hmm. is my life and if mm -hmm. you can't understand that then why would if you can't respect that of me yeah then you know you're mm -hmm. just using me as your workhorse mm -hmm. then th it's got to be a mutual understanding right so i i can't stand when people 
have that vision and and think like she disappeared or he disappeared and it mainly was from a man's point of view it's mm-hmm. kind of like you have to keep working because they didn't have to be at home right. they didn't have to tend to their kids or didn't mm-hmm. have to so it's kind of like all that weight and pressure was on us females mm-hmm. and now that we're coming here and working mm-hmm. if we say no regardless of what why we say no to because sometimes there's ladies that say i don't want to work with this person because i know that i morally and I have integrity Mm -hmm. I know what this person has done I refuse to be a part of that Mm -hmm. there's people getting backlash for that Tiffany Haddish I yesterday announced that she's not going to be working in Atlanta Mm -hmm. because she's not uh she doesn't agree with what's going on in Georgia Uh okay yeah and I'm looking at the comments oh gosh Mm -hmm. and it's just they're ripping her apart (sighs) this is the problem Mm is like someone had told me the other day um, I can't believe how bad the world's getting. Mm. And I said, you know what? I, it's not, it's always been the same. The difference is like we have our devices that capture oh, everything. Gosh. Oh gosh. You know, yes. th- that's the truth is like, it's more in our face mm-hmm. before we weren't as in our face. Mm-hmm. And so I think that it's important for us to, if we're going to be supporting each other, mm-hmm. if someone's going to, if you're going to come to me, Lisa and say, Hey, my daughter's going to, you know, or what, whatever, you know, I'm going to take some time off because I still want to do this creatively, but mm-hmm. I need it for my creative self and for them. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be back in three months. Mm-hmm. Then I'd be like, cool, I'll see you in three months. Right. I'm not going to be there like three months later and you come back to me and be like, I'm a little bit older. I'm like, I don't care. Come on, let's get to work. <laughs> you know, but there's, there's yeah. some people that think, all right, where were you? You know, mm-hmm. like, I don't, I don't know if you're still as, I'm like, as good as what? I've already <laughs> proven myself. I've already made it this far. Mm-hmm. I've proven myself even more so because I have that integrity where I took the time to take away from things and say, I'm going to step back and take care of this. Mm-hmm. I'll be back. Yeah. I mean, it's also, it's a little different for an actor mm-hmm. because oh yeah, huh. we do age. Oh, yeah. And our bodies change with children, with childbearing. Mm-hmm. and. So then, you know, you come back and I went from being the ingenue to now I'm the mother right. and I'm only seen as the mother, which is a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. But it's like they, by, you know, your looks, it's so. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. That's very and interesting. When I was casting my movie, uh, it was so important to both me and the director who mm-hmm. he's a he's a man, but he's probably one of the most feminist people I know Mm -hmm. probably more feminist than some (laughs) of my women friends and we just wanted to have such a um a diverse representation on screen of all body shapes of Mm -hmm. all ethnicities I love that yeah so just it's so important to me to just represent these older women Mm -hmm. who've been there you know and uh, whose bodies are not perfect right um, when I was in London recently, one of the actresses, she's in one of the funniest scenes of the <laughs> movie. She plays the ex-wife. <laughs> and she, w- we were on a podcast together in London, and she was saying um, that I have, she said, I had to admit, when um, I was giving my sizes, I said I was a little smaller because I was so worried you guys were going to look at my sizes Aww. and then not want to cast me. That's- <laughs> Like that blew my mind because oh. I would never do that to another actor. I just, I, my mind doesn't think that way. But she said the jeans they got her were so small. Oh. Oh. She could, she said it, she had to do like special leg oh. like, exercises. I think, I think as females, we've all kind of done that. Like, yeah. she said she thinks she did some like internal damage to her oh, organs. But it, it, it blew my mind that. As an actor, someone would think I'm like that as a mm. producer mm-hmm. because I have the norm of yeah. outside of you. And I've been that actor mm-hmm. so scared that yeah. I'm that I'm too big or my thighs are too big or my hips are too big. Oh, my God. I've done so much work on myself to not be that way and to not care. Right. And then to have an actress think I'm going to be like that. I'm like, uh-huh. no, not at all. And I said, uh, we were 100% looking at your performance, yeah. just you as an actor. And she was wonderful. So I'm like, yeah. let's not let our bodies stop us. Let's not, or our, I think our views. Yeah, and I think that's like a normalcy, unfortunately, that we can break. It's mm-hmm. just like, these are the expectations. Those are what, obviously, those are things that you had experienced and mm-hmm. she's still experiencing, you know, yes. currently. Mm-hmm. So if we break that mold, yes. then it's fine. I mean, all the advertisements that are coming out, like just seeing like everything. And I'm just like, this is fantastic. This, yes. this needs to continue because that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Your shape is you. And mm-hmm. that's perfect. Yeah. If you want to change yourself, 
absolutely go for it. Mm -hmm. But you have to be secure in who you are. Right. But it's important that <coughs> our industry pushes that positivity. Mm -hmm. um, there was a journalist that had wrote a whole thing uh, uh, about the Nike model. I don't know if you saw the Nike mm -hmm. model. There was a mannequin, and mm -hmm. she was. They made this Nike made sure that this mannequin represents who they're trying yes. to get. Right. Mm -hmm. So she's a, a full body mannequin mm -hmm. you know and um this journalist went on and how this was negative this this is wrong for oh nike to God. do because uh women that could fit this wouldn't be exercising uh, that is absolutely outrageous yeah it was this outrageous. really bad article and sadly this journalist has a lot of pull and the the whatever she wrote the article that she wrote went out there and and hit a lot of major press and whatnot and so it was not a good thing and so you had women saying like i'm glad nike did this because it's bec i wear nike mm -hmm. to feel comfortable so that i can get to the size that i am or maintain the size that i am mm -hmm. and because regardless of whether like i'm i'm a pretty big girl i actually am healthy for my size mm -hmm. and you know, people look at me and think like, oh, maybe she's going to be obese or going towards mm -hmm. the obese side. And I'm thinking, you know, that's a word that you hear and think there's a lot of health issues. Ironically, I my I'm not diabetic. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I my cholesterol isn't high. My blood pressure isn't high. I'm actually very healthy mm -hmm. for my size. And people would look at me and not think that. Right. And there's a lot of women out there that are the same way. Just mm -hmm. because they look big doesn't mean that there's a lot of health right. issues, which right. I'm going to jump on this because yes. I'm pretty tiny but yeah. genetically wise mm -hmm. i have high cholesterol in my family wow. yeah and and i have my doctor's like yeah so you know you got high cholesterol and you know you should be on a low sodium low fat diet and i'm like i've never <laughs> dieted and i don't want to um, but genetically that's <laughs> right. what it's telling me so right. on the outside you shouldn't just like yeah. it's that old saying you shouldn't mm -hmm. judge a book by its cover mm -hmm. so i mean absolutely yeah. just to jump on that and yeah. those mannequins I was happy to see those different sizes, different shapes, different skin tones. I was like, this is what it should be. Mm -hmm. No offense. I mean, if, if you are those model esque ladies mm -hmm. or gentlemen, totally fine. But at the same time, you know, what's right. real life. Right. And that's why I'm glad that your, your project represents that. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't see a lot of that where, you know, um, I, I, I talked to a couple of people where they're saying like, Oh, they're bringing a lot of back, uh, back a lot of shows right mm -hmm. they're doing the whole comeback and and i yeah, yeah. some of them succeed and some of them don't like mm -hmm. will and grace is doing great mm -hmm. but like you see what will and grace is about and what it represents and it's very diverse yeah. mm -hmm. it, and someone asked me do you think friends would come back and i said i don't think friends would be able to survive this That's time true. it just yeah. it wouldn't because if you i've watched a lot of friends and they were ironically very homophobic even though they were very pushing that but a lot of the jokes that the main characters made seem homophobic wow. and i didn't realize it at the time until mm -hmm. now that i'm watching it and there was a lot of l jokes that were anti what ironically even though they were pushing it and there were trailblazers for pushing oh, like you know a uh, first lesbian wedding oh, yeah. a lot of the jokes were against it mm -hmm. so it's like really interesting the way they did it and yeah. i said i said if you actually watch friends it's the same thing that i say about sex in the city it would not survive mm -hmm. now yeah. Then I, you know, then I was like such a big fan, and then now I watch it now and I cringe, and I'm like, oh, oh gosh. that's because you've changed. You know? you know what I mean? Like the yeah. the times have changed, but if they were to like mash it up and change it up, so that way it is current to the mm -hmm. times, then like mm -hmm. the storyline would definitely have legs to run. Yeah. But absolutely, like it is mm -hmm. weird that like when you watch something at first. And then, like, decades later, you're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, I grew up on, you know, 16 Candles. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was, like... We're all in the same. We're all in the same. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, I mean, me and my friends, we knew every line of that movie. And my daughter, who oh, is 13 my now... I know what you're saying. Oh, my God. But, you know, it was so great. We watched it together. Yeah. Right. And she was like, Mom, this is so wrong. Yeah. This yep. is so bad. Oh, my god. And she was able to see, oh, my God, this is so sexist. This is so racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. But it was so yeah. cool because the, the school she goes to, it's progressive and right. all, you know, she, she has just such different parents in mm. a different time and, yeah. you know, raised by a feminist. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> she's able to identify it. So she's not at the subject, uh, the, of the object or subjective to it. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So. So how great is it that your project mm -hmm. could stand the test of time? I hope so. I think, come on. <laughs> 
I mean, because like, <laughs> don't give really, too much away. But well, yeah, I'm not giving but too yes, much away, but, but yeah. I'm just saying like, I, it's one of those, and that's what's great about it. It's like there's certain films that no matter you know when you're where you're at, it kind of still makes sense. Like West Side Story, it still makes yeah, sense. It's true. still true to what it is, and mm-hmm. God, look how long ago it was. You know, yeah. I mean, it deals with uh, police brutality, and yeah, and it's crazy because of the time that that was made, and then now we're still living it mm-hmm. more so now yeah. and so there's certain projects there's certain films that do t- uh stand the test of time mm-hmm. and i know it's kind of weird because you're sitting there going like that's deep and then you're saying say my name is there too <laughs> and it's like this <laughs> really it's a great comedy but it yeah. does go in that kind of yeah, realm yeah, yeah the it feels more like a throwback classic mm-hmm. um comedy of maybe the the 1950s -hmm. there is something very old-fashioned about it yet it's also very current right so yeah i mean i hope it stands the test (laughs) i hope it does no i think it will i think it will and you're just saying it like it represents so much it represents women you're saying that you wanted to make sure that there was diversity involved Mm -hmm. um and i think you tackled that very well so, I mean, props to the filmmakers involved in this yeah. project and Thank obviously you. the producers as well, because that's what let it be what it is. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it, it's been really interesting because I was on the board of a feminist film festival and I decided, mm-hmm. um, why don't I bring my film <laughs> to the, <laughs> the film festival that I'm actually on the board of? And um, they wouldn't watch it. What? They wouldn't watch it. And it was it was kind of crazy. She said, well... Um, well, first, it's a romantic comedy, so we don't do that. Uh, it's, I said, what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, this, this was kind of mind-blowing for me. I'm no longer involved in this festival right. <laughs> yeah. because there was something that she thought that because it's a romantic comedy, it can't be feminist. I'm like, but what? we actually turn the whole genre on its head, and mm-hmm. the, you know, the man is the object and yeah. the woman. And, but there was something like, well, feminism and comedy can't mix and it's like no the greatest political messages you right. can get through is through comedy yeah. you don't want to just be you know preached at with right. some, like but they will only take like it, uh, rbj or rbg like yeah, that's, right oh, like it, unless okay. it's like a serious okay interesting you know, or in movies not just documentaries so it but w- it has to be serious and kind of pounding you over the head with feminism i'm like that's not the world we live yeah. in we need to connect on right. a human level, yes. In order to get these messages, yeah, because the connection is what you need. I mean, exactly. it's the message that's the most important. It, yeah. And however it's delivered, whether it's through comedy or lecture or drama or whatever mm-hmm. it happens to be, mm-hmm. the baseline is <coughs> the message. Exactly. That's kind exactly. of that's mind blowing to, to yeah, hear that. It was it was kind of mind blowing. Um, but oh. you know, I'm I'm proud of it, and and it's written by a feminist. It's produced by a feminist. <laughs> and the lead is a feminist. So this feminist um, doesn't know what feminism is. Yeah, <laughs> we kind of know. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's well, I interesting. To, I wanted to circle back and yes. so let, have our listeners get to know you. Yes, like we've been mainly focused on a project, which has been mm-hmm. lovely, and they can find it online mm-hmm. and then or at the. Um, they're it's showcasing at the two two theaters. Yeah, Rena Cine Lounge in Hollywood and the Lemley of Monica Film Center yeah. in Santa Monica. So, let's kind of hear about how you fell into this because you said you were first an actor, correct? Mm-hmm. And then, so I'm gonna let you just share that with our listeners. Okay. I was a professional actress since I was seven years old in New York, like my whole life. <laughs> it's my only identity. <laughs> it's like I, I really can't do anything else. I, I had one job as a waitress one weekend and I literally was um, fired in two days. <laughs> so basically I have no choice but to be acting. Um, and yeah, I, I moved out to LA about 20 years ago. I got my first big feature, The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Woohoo! Nice. Yeah, nice. and I've done um, tons of pilots and lots of guest starring roles on CBS shows for some reason you know cbs has been my thing i love cbs yeah and um tnt they've also (laughs) been really great for me and um, two great networks yeah and then i became a mom (laughs) and that's where (laughs) and that's what kind of happened um and when i was 32 i had my first daughter and you know just getting back into things i loved i love taking guest star guest starring roles Mm -hmm. as a mom because you know, I'm only working a few days here and there, and yeah. I could just be fully hands on the rest of the time. But as I said, it just kind of got, you know, a little 
sad yeah. having to just cry as the victim. Right. <laughs> oh. I did it an episode of Criminal Minds, which was like, talk about crying. Oh my God. It was terrifying. <laughs> um, and I couldn't believe that um, CBS could actually portray this. It was really mind blowing because I don't really watch a lot of um, network television. But anyway, so yeah, there I was a victim. It was a great mm. role, but um, <laughs> a lot, um, yeah, a lot so, to dig in. Yeah, so I just decided um, I really I needed more, mm. and I started producing theater, and that was really satisfying to be able to just do my thing on my own terms and be the boss, and to have plays that had my voice, and then I decided I wanted to do a film. And now I'm actually producing my second feature. Congrats. That's what I was going to ask. Like, what do you have coming up? After? Yeah, well, <clears throat> on that, that note of, you know, a woman at 40 mm -hmm. kind of disappearing in our culture, mm -hmm. a friend of mine, a Sumali Montano, she brought me a script that she developed about um, it takes place in a dystopian future. Mm -hmm. And it's a mother-daughter -da story about... Um, that everyone in this future at age 40, you have to die. It's it's part of this government deal yeah. because you're no longer needed. Right. You know, wow. you're a woman who's over 40. So how you're how, just like, yeah. what's the contribution? Yeah, what, 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 what are you there for? <laughs> We're done. You know, your your childbearing years are, you know, dwindling right. away. So yeah, just kill yourself <laughs> anyway. But it's, it's very serious and it's very, it's very intense. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I connected with it immediately. I brought it to Electric Entertainment, and um, we're producing it now. Um, it's uh, we're in pre-production in Serbia right now. Oh wow. my goodness! And uh, I leave in two weeks. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's exciting. Yeah, and for me, I love the mother-daughter story. It's right. two um, women of color. It's the it's beautiful mm. um, story between them, and about how you deal with your parents' death. Yeah. And right. um, anyway. I'm not going to say whether it's a happy ending or not. Oh. But <laughs> right. It's also, you know, not to get political at all. It's really hard for me not to be political, but it's kind Same. of, yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. I'm trying to do my best. I actually had a feminist t-shirt on, but I changed it last minute. I'm going, oh, oh my God. I zipped, up, I zipped up my shirt and I was like, <laughs> just, I didn't no. realize what I was wearing okay. until now. I was like, okay. So I'm going to stop, I'm gonna stop both yeah. of you right there. Say what you want to say. Yeah. And wear what you want to wear, <laughs> regardless, because it's who yeah. you represent and it's who you are. Yeah. That's it. I have like my Maxine Waters t-shirt saying, reclaiming my time. I yep. love <laughs> it. <laughs> love it. So now I have my, um, I love, I love you a lot, <laughs> <laughs> I Like that too. <laughs> so. I'm representing my, you know, the Jewish side of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. No, I, it, you're right though. It's, it's difficult because it's, uh, you don't you're holding back from being political mm -hmm. in a world where we're all forced, oh my gosh you know because you're you're just kind of like really what in yeah. shock like what else now what's exactly. next <laughs> like, exactly and you know having my two daughters all right i'm gonna go there <laughs> i'm just going there no you should absolutely like, they were so excited about the last election mm -hmm. and i'm like girls you are about to live through something in history that we have never seen before, mm -hmm. that we're ready for. A woman's going to be president. Mm -hmm. You know, tracking the polling. Uh, My little one went to preschool in a pantsuit to aw, represent. I wore lovely. a pantsuit. My older daughter, we oh. all wore pantsuits <laughs> to school that day. And I picked my daughter up from school, and she and I'm like, I can't wait. We're going to go home. We're going to watch. And my, my daughter said, you know, M Mom, I, I kind of have bad news. Oh, no. There is this one guy who's predicting that Donald Trump's going to win. Yep. And supposedly he's always right. And he's been, I can't remember who it was. Mm. And I said, well, he's wrong. This is the <laughs> first time in history he's wrong. And then, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. kind of, like, put everything of that on pause. That was I, a, I think uh, we're living in an era of retaliation. Mm -hmm. um, look we had the women's march and it was like mm -hmm. the largest march um and that it was worldwide mm -hmm. it was like they had it everywhere yeah. yeah um and this was the day after he was uh sworn in yeah right <laughs> i was marching right yep. so, so was i saying so <laughs> think everyone look, in this look at where we're at now <laughs> look at where we're at yeah. now everything is a retaliation oh yeah i mean they're you're they're trying to take rights away from women mm -hmm. i mean they're there's 
it's just insane. Like there was uh, something where I read somewhere where they were trying, I forget what state it was, where they're trying to have it back where women have to have permission, like basically from their spouse to get, uh, I forget what it was. I don't think it was to vote, but it was something to get credit or something like that where they mm-hmm. had to. So they were trying Which to get that. Which just passed in 1977, 42 years ago. But they were trying to get that back. Oh my gosh. So I, I think like everything that you, everything that's happening is mm-hmm. a retaliation. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, Trump being president is a retaliation to Obama's oh presidency gosh. for the past eight years. Yeah. You know, so it's like everything <sighs> is kind of like, yeah, don't do that again, oh or or we'll come back, you know, harder. Yeah. And I I think we have to. I mean, I don't want to be political either, <laughs> but we have to. That's why I'm wearing my my. What are you wearing? <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> that's great. That's, so I, I put that on, and um, which your dad hates you wearing that because he's so fearful of that something you. will happen. Yeah, he thinks They're, someone will attack mm. me for wearing this. And I, I honestly, dogs laid on my sweatshirt. <laughs> I was fighting a sickness all week, and so I put on my clothes, and I didn't realize it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's like I don't want to offend anyone <laughs> or upset anyone and i don't know and you know i don't want it to become that so anyways let's get back to what <laughs> we're here for okay so i just have to piggyback on like this yeah. conversation i think mm-hmm. that we have a voice that's being listened to now yeah and we should not be silencing ourselves mm-hmm. or pausing mm-hmm. because we think we're going to offend somebody because we're not doing anything wrong by giving our opinion or yeah. voicing our yeah, thoughts right. because <laughs> What we feel is who we are. And yeah. I think that when we do that, we still have this old school mentality of like, we need to be these ladies that are like, mm-hmm. you know, very reserved and yeah. not vulgar or. Yeah. I just, for me, I just worry about the other side. I mean, when the elections happened and I started, you know, tweeting my political stuff, mm-hmm. the amount of vitriol that came back to yeah. me. Yes. was just scary mm-hmm. and unheard of. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think that's what it's about. It's just intimidation. Right. right. But that it's that it's that kind of thing. Cause, I mean, the country yeah. has never been that divided. And whether it's just on Twitter or mm-hmm. oh, it's every, you know, all social media. Yeah. All social so- media. Everyone's you know tweeting, you yeah. know, hiding behind their devices. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's um. Yeah. It's scary. Well, and I think too. Like that's. I think that's the most poisonous part. Is mm-hmm. that people will attack other people behind a screen, mm-hmm. or they won't have a strong. They're like they're a coward to like either not come forward and say something. Like if you have an opinion, I have no problem listening to you. Yeah. But at least let me let me have a conversation so I can also voice my opinion because this is yours and that's yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Everyone's entitled to it, but yeah. I'm not gonna force you mm-hmm. to like try to persuade and change you. Right. But I'm also not going to attack you. That's yeah. just not who I am as a human being. Absolutely. So like you threatening me or those things that are just coming out at, at you or for whatever the political things that you've said because it's mm-hmm. your opinion. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that is the right way of approaching things. Right. But I yeah. think definitely it is poisonous that people hide behind a screen mm-hmm. to attack yeah. others. Yeah, and I really feel like we're living in a, such absurd time right now mm-hmm. it's, it feels so dark mm-hmm. that i feel like back to my movie right <laughs> exactly yes exactly it's, you know, that's what it's, we have it's a though. comedy and i i feel like there through these times in history that we mm-hmm. need it yes yeah. and the romantic comedies of the 1930s yes. you know mm-hmm. during the you know when, yeah. when things were you know happening then yeah <laughs> um that it's it my movie is very escapist and it, it gives a good message and yes. a positive message and it's love and it's light and mm. um it's 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 something we need right now exactly yeah. no i mean i definitely need it it's I, true I, I i watched the pilot of handmaid's tale yeah. and it is so brilliant and right? it's scary but i couldn't watch it i'm mm-hmm. like i feel like i'm living this now mm-hmm. and i i can't i can't put my girls to bed and I'll put myself through this. Right. I need something that's going to be escapist exactly. and yeah. make me laugh and just, I mean, I watch my Rachel Maddow <laughs> <laughs> and then a uh, shout out to Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, you know, after nine 11 happened, it, we were mm-hmm. all in mourning, right? Yeah. Shock and mourning. Yeah. And it wasn't until Saturday night live decided and, and they were saying, we're doing this because we need it Mm -hmm. and then we're right Mm -hmm. and that's what helps like 
I don't watch news as much as I used to. I watch mm-hmm. comedy. Yes. Like I seriously watch John Oliver. I watch oh, uh, Trevor Noah. Great. Like that's what I watch because they have such a way of saying things where it's all true, it's all factual, mm-hmm. and then it makes you laugh of how insane and sad and pathetic things are right now. Yeah. But you're just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like wait, yeah. Wait. It's, it's the comedy is like what we like, need. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's all about the delivery. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's how mm-hmm. as long as you get the message across. It's really mm-hmm. about the delivery. Because yeah. then it, 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 I mean, yes, it's going to upset some people, but at least you're being informed. Mm-hmm. But that's, you're right. That's why we need Say My Name. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it represents everything that we're struggling with. Yeah. And it helps. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of like, oh my God, yeah. how old is she and she's having sex? That's unheard of. <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but you know, it's like, Absolutely. it's not. <laughs> and it's, it's, I don't want to, just watch it. <laughs> I'm not telling you to watch it. I'm telling everyone that's listening, just watch it. But because they have to, they yeah. should. I encourage people yeah. to watch this film because mm-hmm. um, we need it. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I, I like to, of course, you know, being me, I like to say it's a woman's movie, but men love this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and it's adorable. The male lead is just fantastic. And he's smart and he's vulnerable and he's innocent. Nick Blood, who's mm-hmm. a pretty famous British actor, he was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. Um, he's fantastic. And men love it. And yeah. it's a great date movie. Yeah. And um, it's it's just, you know, the roles are reversed. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, the woman is, you know, the fast talking, <laughs> witty, strong. <laughs> and the guy's the the bumbling, like, what am I, what's happening? What do I do? How do I, how do I deal with this? And yeah. she's just like, follow my lead. Right. Which, um, which is so true to today. Yeah. <laughs> it seriously is. There's so many strong women out there and Absolutely. men just don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, it's it's a it's a funny, beautiful little romance between them. So <laughs> I get all my me- my little messages. <laughs> That's so and, nice. Yeah, and it was also it was very important for me to portray this really tough woman mm-hmm. with a vulnerable side, right? Because as women, I find so m- when we are vulnerable, we're seen as weak, mm-hmm. and I feel like women's vulnerability and our our way to access our emotions right um is actually a strength yeah and i tell that to my daughters my older daughter who's such an artist she's very um vulnerable Mm -hmm. and she's feels everything and i want her to just know that that is a strong thing about her and and she's going to create the best art because of that right and the best music and the best poetry and if she goes into acting or directing or whatever it is it's that vulnerability that's a strength Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it's important for my character to go there at the end yeah. mm-hmm. without giving away too Yeah, much. I was like, <laughs> that is, that is on point because that's what makes uh, films from by, that's by women, mm-hmm. that represents women, especially not so much that just represents women, but that are uh, filmmakers involved in it mm-hmm. that are women, uh, makes it different. Because mm-hmm. like we've all watched uh, Wonder Woman mm-hmm. and... <laughs> People's minds were blown when her thigh jiggled. I mean, I don't remember I, that. I don't, no, seriously? No, yeah. Because they were saying, like, if oh you watch God. a man's direction of uh, Wonder Woman, like, because she was in whatever prequels or whatever it was, because mm-hmm. I don't follow that. But she, same actress, puts her leg down and it's like <laughs> strong, right? Mm-hmm. And it's all post work that they did. Mm-hmm. But when you see Wonder Woman, who was directed by a female, and you see her do the same exact move mm-hmm. in the film, and her thigh jiggles a little bit. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were like, "Wait, her thigh jiggled," and oh and it was mind blowing. And I was like, "But that's what you get, because from a female perspective, you get the reality mm-hmm. of things." <sighs> yeah, it's not yeah. you know, and it's that's so what's true. great about it. And that's that's why I'm glad, I'm glad that you said that, because I'm that's why I want people to watch your film because it's uh, it's not you're, you're right. Your director is. Uh, very feminist because <laughs> I wouldn't have known it was a male director mm-hmm. so props to him <laughs> but it's it's the people behind it and in front of it right yes and that's what makes it great mm-hmm. you know because yeah, you're representing that yeah the, and the writer um Deborah mm-hmm. Francis White she's um obviously a big feminist her, her podcast is the guilty feminist, feminist. <laughs> <laughs> um it was so important for her to show a woman who gets out of dangerous situations with her wit mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. her intellect, mm-hmm. because 
that is so much the reality for most women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When if if a man was writing it, she would probably suddenly become like a karate chopping right. ninja woman oh doing you know wheel house. So true. Kid. Right. <laughs> but that is so not the reality. No. I mean, and and when you think about it, of your life, if there was ever a time where you were in a situation where like oh, I don't really like the way things are going. Yeah. What do we do? I mean, I, I, I tend to subconsciously or consciously at this point suddenly bring up, so, yeah, my girls are at home and, yeah, I, I have two children. Do you have two? Do you have children? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly they're like they're seeing me as a mother mm -hmm. and now they're seeing themselves as a father. And I've just kind of diffused the situation mm -hmm. that way. And we do that kind of all the time. I actually did have to learn karate literally for a pilot that yeah. I did um, years ago. And um, I was working with this amazing black belt karate expert. Yeah. And he said something to me to the fact that he can be dropped anywhere in the world and he can live. Like he can just survive. He's so incredibly strong in all the self-defense. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize until he said that how scared I am all the time. Yeah. Just walking in this world. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. As a woman. As a mm -hmm. woman. Yeah, completely. And it was just really mind-blowing. And then I went on this kick. Then I'm going to learn karate, and I'm going to learn self-defense. But, of course, that, that just fell by the wayside, <laughs> and I still wouldn't know what to do. But I still have my mind. Yeah. yeah. I could still talk my way out of stuff. I think that's really interesting that you bring that up because I, I always say in situations that you're in, you either freeze or you react, whether it's mm -hmm. with your mind or physically. So mm -hmm. when, when people are talking – and there's no physical like aggressiveness, mm -hmm. I definitely use my mind to shut them up. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, do you speak to your mother that way? Or like, how does your wife feel about that? Right. Like, I, cause I don't have kids and I'm not married. So that's mm -hmm. what I kind of do. Like, mm -hmm. so I go to the mom cause pretty much everybody has the mama. <laughs> so it's kind of like, do you know, do her proud. Yeah. Or like, I, uh, this is sad because I think it was like last month I had gotten like my behind grabbed uh -huh. and my first reaction was to elbow somebody. Mm -hmm. Just like, what? Like there was no words. It was just like, oh, okay, yeah, that mm -hmm. happened. What do you oh, What do you do? Yeah, yeah. A, a years ago, we my husband had this friend. He he's like, oh, it's my brother. Um, stay at our house. Yeah. And my husband left for work, and the guy came behind me and started massaging my Ooh. shoulders. No. I almost threw up, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just went, <laughs> and I just ran out of the room, and I yeah. called my husband, and but it, like it was like I didn't know what to do. Right. Um. But I feel like now that I'm older, I would get it. elbow him. But or. it's still, yeah, but it's still such a hard thing to like, like to train yourself because we're so like, yeah. we're grooved into this like contingency of like what the norm is that mm -hmm. like, what do you, what, how, how can we train our daughters yeah. and our sons to, to live norm. and make those, yeah, to make yes. a new norm. Exactly. So I, I dislike uh, t doing this, but we have oh. to wrap it up. Oh, seriously, uh, <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, where can we find, uh, again, you said in the beginning, let's mm -hmm. say it again, where we can find, uh, s say my name. And then if you want, where can people follow you if you want them to follow you? <laughs> <laughs> Only follow me if you're going to say nice things. <laughs> right? Yes, um, yes. Well, um, you can find the movie at saymynamemovie.com. And you can follow at me at, at the Lisa Brenner on Instagram. I think on Twitter, I'm um, at Lisa Brenner 212. Maybe I should merge those at some point. Mm -hmm. You can follow me on Facebook. Um, I have a Lisa Brenner fan page. And um, yeah, I just, I really hope you like the movie and rent it, buy it even better. <laughs> See it this weekend at the Arena uh, Cine Lounge or the Lemley Monica Film, Cent Monica Film Center. Uh, in Santa Monica. It is, I know, gosh. <laughs> Um, I think it used to be called the Monica's, but now it's the Santa, whatever. The Le <laughs> Le <laughs> look up Lemley in yes. Santa Monica and you'll right. find it. But there's, and, yeah, a multiple var a variety of places where we can find this film and everyone yeah. should come and see it. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank so you so thank much. you, Lisa, for being our special guest today and sharing a lot about, and most importantly, thank you for making this project yeah. and, and uh, coming here and sharing it with us. And mm -hmm. I do encourage everyone to watch it. I'll go ahead and uh, send information, post information as where you can find it, the theaters and what, you know, and the social, I'm sorry, not social, but iTunes and Amazon. But I will be sharing the theaters. On the YouTube. Thank you on, so much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And everyone have a safe and happy Sunday.
You're listening to Female Filmmakers Fuse with Alexa Poehler and Robin Pabello only on L.A. Talk Radio. 